Okay, here we are for my uh, next little bit of my introduction to doing retro games using Unity 3D. And uh, I'm looking right now at OpenSCAD, which has been my favorite tool lately for making graphics. I've been uh, just whipping together things that are sort of have a mechanical look to them because it is a CAD software. They're a little bit lo-fi, and uh, in doing so, you end up with some stuff that I think uh, reflects a bit of a retro kind of aesthetic without having to necessarily get into pixel graphics. I'd like things to be a little more high fidelity for the the tablet that I'm working on, but I'd also like to use pixelated elements where where it's where it's interesting. Uh, and I'm having a lot of fun with this kind of 2D, 3D thing where you make the 3D models and then project them orthographically. So you can rotate them and get some interesting things, but you still have that flatness and that controlled element where things are lined up just the way you want. So I've been using uh, OpenSCAD for most of that, and then Blender has been my tool of choice for doing uh, further cleanup and refinement and getting the textures put on things. Uh, I used Open, which one? Oh, uh, Google SketchUp actually to make this model of the Defender ship or the familiar, uh, I don't know what the name of it is, the Super Eagle, <laughs> the Rescuer. Uh, and uh, then colored it in very similarly to the original uh, aesthetic and I brought this now over uh, by exporting it in FBX you get exactly what you want the texture the alignment and everything and scaling as you scale it the way you want uh, and then you just bring it over into unity and your uh, and there's your models uh, you can see here here they are uh, some of my models for the game are right in here. You have, uh, here's our pod, and here's a settler lying down. Here's a swarmer, which is, uh, and there's a, a lander. Uh, the, there's a drone and a, a, a saucer. And uh, the terrain is divided in two pieces, although I can't show you very close up, but uh, you can see it obviously in the game close up. Uh, and so it's very easy workflow, uh, just messing around that way. Uh, being on the on the very simple level, I, if I was doing much more complex modeling, I'd have to learn a lot more Blender, uh, which I'd love to do. But right now, I just know the basics, and I know enough to do this sort of stuff. It's, so I'm I'm having a lot of fun with that, and I'll use it to do more interesting things as I learn. Uh, so by using a 3D model, it gave me some flexibility. Again, you could reuse a lot of these uh, assets once you've built them, and and uh, use them close up and rotate them and do all kinds of cool things. Uh, and I'm looking forward to exploring that more. So here we have my, uh, my scene. And I'll just give you an overview of the scene that I've built. Uh, and you can see that the basic game is built in all one scene, one big uh, level. And I have some persistent objects. And I could break it up into more levels and have it load, say, the the landscape and have a different landscape and a different level and have different enemies and stuff. Uh, but for now, I just built it all in one so that I could say uh, have everything in there, which as a fairly small ga scale game for the classic uh, game element that I'm building so far, uh, you have uh, only a certain you know small number of models, which you can see here in my window, uh, and and then you just have more and more instances of them and uh, Unity 3D can handle that all day long. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of them. <laughs> it does it just great. So let me give you a little view of uh, how I built the scene and before I do I'll just give a run of the game and show you what happens when the game runs and the scene side by side with the game if I can do that. Uh, okay so there we, here we have the game running. And I'll just uh, shrink it down and here's our scene. And you can see as the game runs, and we'll just in the attract mode, the camera is panning along with uh, the ship, which is invisible. And the camera preview, which you can see here, is panning along with it. And if we back up as the ship re reaches a certain point, uh, I could hurry it, but I'll just let it go. the ship will reach a certain point and the landscape in the backside will move ahead of the ship so that by the time we get there 
everything will be ah there we go where just where we need it to be and so that trick is surprisingly easy and I'll demonstrate that and give some code examples of that at a point in the future uh, but yeah and from the, the player point of view all you see is just continuous movement uh, by the time you ran out of space or the math became uh, unwieldy inside of unity you would basically have played for days so it works well for a, a small contained game like this and I always reset it back to zero anyway when you start so uh, you're basically uh, you'll never run out of space in this game Okay, so just checking the time, I have about five minutes to explain uh, some of the layout, and I'll just go over the, the basic layout of, of the game as you've just seen. Uh, so here, of course, I have, uh, let's just run it, and I'll do a pause and show it as it's running instead of when it's not. Okay, so cool. So here we have, inside the game, you'll see I've got GOTH Goth, that's the the main game uh, which manages everything and other things call into it when they want to do global stuff. Uh, I, I might do more messaging stuff and, and uh, pass things around that way so that things can just respond, you know, everything can be like, I, oh, I'm listening for that, I'll do it. Uh, but for now I've done basically mostly callbacks or, uh, and in a game like this most things can chain one after the other as soon as the game over screen is done it comes back to the front screen and so forth so the game over can say decide when to say go look it will go back to the front screen since that's all the only place it ever goes so but if you have something where you need to be more flexible you can think of other ways of doing that uh, anyway to get into more detail about the layout here's the camera and there's a camera for the main display that displays the the, that stands away from the mountains and shows everything from the side uh, and it sometimes zooms in and out as you're playing and so there's also a separate camera for the back which just shows the mountains and stuff you can see if I turn that on and off the star field disappears uh, some of the explosions still remain and other other effects still remain uh, let's just unpause it so you can see the there we go okay so uh, that camera uh, just shows like the star field and stuff there's also uh, an attract camera which shows things in front, like these thing, these little dudes. There's a radar camera at the top which shows the, which from a at a smaller scale, which shows things and only their icons. And actually, each uh, enemy on the screen has an icon associated with it, including your ship, a little ship icon. It's just a sphere, a white sphere, and uh, those are shown inside the radar. Uh, and so that's how I built. Each of these things, where it, wherever it goes, the sphere goes. Uh, and so there's a, the radar camera, again, very simple, just another camera. Tell it where to display on the screen. In this case, 0.3 uh, to 0.9, at 0.3 and 0.91, and it's wide 0.4 or 0.09 height. You know, that gives you that radar. So, I don't know, it's just it's really easy to make a radar uh, that corresponds to your game uh, in Unity. It's, it's unbelievably easy and fun. Uh, <laughs> so then there's some audio player uh, sources on, attached to the camera. There's some stars that are there and then uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, there's also a big uh, cube that is used to blow things up when you want to turn on your smart bomb. It just occupies the visible area and anything that touches it dies. Very simple way to do a smart bomb. Uh, the player ship has uh, its mesh. It has uh, uh, an icon with it. Uh, again, all the enemies are here as prefabs. Um, I'll get more into the the details of this uh, at a later time. And you can see again the the scene has the world divided into two halves, and those are in the scene. And I'll get more into how those work in the next segment when I go into scripting. So uh, anyway, that's the the basics of it. Little marquees that overlay the screen for when we need them, and uh, the Woogly plugin for, for the web build. Uh, so anyway, I'll get more into all of that at a later time. I think I'm about out of time now, so we'll just cut it here.